be seated. We're going to jump right into the Word tonight. And I'm so thankful for the Word. It's changed my life. You know, um, we have been walking with God for some time now. And uh, I guess since I was three, I guess I didn't necessarily walk with God all the time throughout that until I turned on fire for God, until I got filled with the Holy Spirit and forever changed my life. Tonight, I want to conclude some thoughts. We've been talking about the law of victory. And we've been saying, guess what? Application is required. If we want to win, we'll need to hear the Word, see the Word, do the Word, and God will watch over the Word. So we talked about victory is preceded by breakthrough. Personal victories are personal life. We walk with God and we have breakthrough on the inside so we can walk it out on the outside. God continues to help us become more like Jesus and helps us to continually prove out what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. And we all have a destination to reach. We all have a purpose to fulfill. And I'm going to fulfill my purpose. What about you? I am. Can you witness with me all night? I say, yes, I'm going to. Victory is preceded by breakthrough. We talked about that. Victory is possible despite impossible circumstances. With God, all things are possible. And then he said, yeah, and all things are possible. Him that believes in my word, me too. And, and walks out my word and, and follows my, the leading of my Holy Spirit. We talked about a leader's uh, first victory is over who? Themselves. And tonight we're going to conclude, conclude with the thought the people's victory follows the leader's breakthrough. Now when I talk about people, see I, I minister words to leaders of leaders, to leaders, to, to church folks, to staffs, and all these different things. So remember, I'm not just talking about people or something vague. Uh, we're, we're talking about me, and we're talking about you. We need to win in vic victoriously on the inside so we can in turn walk it in our daily life, and then we can help others to obtain that victory too. I said it last week. I'll say it again. At some point, when is it going to become less about me and more about you? You know, when, when is it going to? As you grow up in God, it becomes that way. Now, we talk about victory, and we know that victory is possible only if you learn how to apply your faith in everyday life, in every aspect of, the, of our life, because this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith in what? Faith in God. Faith in what? Faith in His Word. In spite of what we see, in spite of what we hear, we're going to walk and trust God no matter what happens. We're going to stand, having done all to stand, and that God has a grace for us to stand. Thank God for grace to stand tonight. We, God has a strength for us to stand. God has encouragement for you, you here tonight. God has, God has a divine, when we assemble, He, he divinely bolsters us up. He, he gives us a, a divine, um, how should I say, uh, stabilization. He'll, he'll pick us up, <laughs> and He'll walk with us right through whatever circumstances that we're facing. So thank God for the Word, and, and of course, we're going to just jump to some other thoughts tonight. We talked about Josiah throughout the course of these um, teachings and, and services and, and what I've been sharing, but when we look at Josiah, we're not going to refer to a scripture other than, you, we've read it in Second Chronicles chapter 34, when Josiah uh, became king, we can look at his life and you can see a winner. And the first thing he did to become a winner is because in spite of all the generations uh, that he is following after that did not serve God, he said, you know what, I'm going to turn this thing around. And no matter what they did, I'm going to start a whole new legacy. I'm going to start in a whole new direction and I'm going to move forward. And so I'm going to turn back to God. When he sought God, he broke through himself personally for, so he could carry out a victory in spite of, a, almost naturally speaking, insurmountable odds and negativity from the people. And as a result, the nation was purged of idols. As a result, the book of the law was rediscovered. 
I wonder if anybody would raise their right hand and say, God, give me a greater hunger for the Word of God like I've not had. Father, refill me with the Holy Spirit, and, and just, Father, I thank you. I yield to your Holy Spirit. Thank you for strengthening me and, and helping me and quickening me. And I thank you, Father, for that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my, in my spirit. And he said, he'll, he'll quicken our mortal bodies. We say thank you, Father, for imparting life to every cell of our bodies, to every cell in our mind and our bodies. And as a result of Josiah, just one person, don't underestimate what just one person can do in a family by saying, I've had enough of that. That's just a cycle of destruction. And as for me and my house, no matter what, no matter what the consequences, and there's a price going to be paid, not to earn it, but to walk in it, we should never underestimate that. I'm standing on the shoulders of some, a, a gentleman, a, a man by the name of Kenneth e. Hagins. I'm standing on his shoulders of the price it took for him to fulfill his ministry so that he can bring not only victory for himself, but to, but to masses. Wonder if he didn't listen to the call. Here, my wife and I, we're standing on the shoulders of the Hagins. We're also standing on the shoulders of our pastors, pastor, uh, pastor uh, well, dad and Mom, we call them. We're standing on their shoulders. Thank God. Listen, you want to thank God for if you see anything good in our life, thank God for the Hagans, thank God for the hashes, but also thank God for the Holy Spirit, thank God for the Word, thank good God for good leaders of our life, thank God, come on somebody, you know what I'm talking about. Thank God for prayer, thank God for good friends, thank God for serving our way to our destiny. And tonight, maybe, just maybe, some of you could say, man, I sure am glad that Pastor and Pastor Misty started this church over in this area. <laughs> I hope you could say that. I'm not looking for claps, I promise you. <laughs> but it, 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 never underestimate the, the power of one. Just never do it. And uh, you just never know who your life might influence to be the next Bishop Ash, the next uh, the next, uh, Dad Hagen, the next, again, I, I'd be remiss without saying, we're standing on the shoulders of Pastor Miss Hagen as well. So, and the key that, that Josiah modeled before us, he remained teachable. Uh, he, he, you know, people that become unteachable never win. Never, never, never win. Because really, 99 and 9 tenths of the time, we should pick up correction in our spirit before anybody naturally has to bring it to our life. Because they're simply just saying what God's been trying to say. And now we need it in a word of knowledge. Now we, this, I'm, not, I'm not downing the gifts of the spirit, but if you're always called out, that's not a real, you know, that's not real flattering. Because, I mean, my goodness, how many times do you need to be called out when you start listening to yourself? You guys, I almost said stupid. Is it okay for me to say stupid tonight? You said it depends who you're talking about. Okay. Well, okay, stupid meetings. All right? There's some stupid meetings where somebody calls himself a prophet to train other prophets, and, and they train them by being in a place at a table. Then they, then they get in a file in a line, and the first person uh, has to prophesy inwardly, and the last person needs to determine what they said. Do you know how dangerous that is? There are familiar spirits, and, and I tell you, you start ask, you asking for dreams and visions and all this kind of stuff, you better be founded on the Word. Wow, I'm already getting, there's just something on me right now to just have uh, some straight talk. I, I sort of like leaders that I don't have to wonder, uh, what are they thinking? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, but anyway, uh, we can all follow this example where Josiah was teachable. Uh, he remained open and teachable, and um, he was willing to learn, he was willing to change, he was willing to face the pain of changing no matter what my forefathers wanted. We're going to go with God, and, and I'll say it like this, just because you had some victories doesn't mean we can slack up now. Same way we got victory in the past, I'm not saying, well, the Word, we'll follow the Word, and then sometimes God will uniquely lead us within the Word, so, last t so we don't get into a rut of the way we receive from God. We receive His Word, 
we receive, uh, you know, by the prayer of faith, what things you desire when you pray, believe you receive, and you shall have them. But then you ask God, wisdom, show me what my way is I'll, so I don't get in your way. I'll believe you're watching over your to perform it, but then also application is required because faith without works is dead. If I need to be doing anything, there has to be an expression of your faith somewhere. It really does. Even people with a strong track, track record, past wins, need to remain teachable. Say it with me. I am teachable. I'm open. And I'm going to remain teachable. And I'm going to remain open. You're going to keep winning too. Josiah removed obstacles carried away from his past. He removed obstacles so he didn't carry forward past experiences. All people and leaders included, of course, must deal with baggage. If a leader takes over an organization following another leader, they inherit baggage. Josiah (laughs) removed these things. You can't move on to a new phase in life if you bring your old baggage with you. Let the bad go and move into the new. Yeah. So as you seek to achieve victory in your life, in ministry, or wherever your roles are, you'll have to face and overcome problems that were created in the past, but rise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, and your days are bright. You've got a better future. If you don't like your past, come on, let's change it. Uh, start listening to your words, because it's a rudder of your mouth. You better watch what you're saying, you know? And, and again, if you hang around people and they're wondering what you're going through, don't lie about it. I mean, sometimes you need to say, well, listen, I'm being challenged with this right now. Will you stand with me? You know, that's, that's okay. Go to the doctor and tell them the truth. Well, tell them what you're going through. We know what the truth says. But by Jesus' stripes, the Word of God says we're healed, and God's watching over His Word to perform it. And, and He's in the process of making it happen. But thank God for, how many thank God for good doctors, good counselors, proper diagnosis, proper, proper uh, prescriptions. And as we trust God and we follow Him from challenges into victory. So tonight, let's just jump right into this. So now that we've gained victory on the inside and we've talked about that, now it's our responsibility to start helping others break through to victory. I said through. <laughs> so I'm sure I'll be saying things like that with Will, won't I? Through. <laughs> yeah. How you do? I'd just like to have some videos, wouldn't you? I hadn't even seen Will yet because he just came home from the hospital and and uh, thank God for that, and I'm sure they're watching online tonight, hey, and I know that Will knows the voice of his pastor, because uh, um, he'd been in church a long time already, so, <laughs> so, but the people's victory always follow the leader's victory, the father's victory, the mother's victory. If the father won't, the mother must. If the, if the mother won't, the father must, um, and if the parents won't, the child must. And some of us here today are, didn't have parents that led us in any direction. Matter of fact, wrong direction, but God got a hold of you somehow. And now today, in spite of your past, you're walking in victory. And there are so many more victories ahead of you. We're going to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Come on, I feel a whole faith series coming on right now. You better be here next week. We're launching into our first First uh, subject, that first subject, I'm right in between seven things. So, but our first message on victorious faith. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. I need you to just hear some good word. And, and what my wife and I have discovered as we're praying, we're trying to make sure if the series are tight on Sunday mornings, well, then they're going to be right on Wednesday evenings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not right on Sunday morning, but I'm just saying we need some, you know, come on. Tell me I'm doing okay. All right. Hey, you're doing okay. You're here tonight, aren't you? You're breathing, aren't you? All right. So here we go. So that's what we're going to be doing. Sometimes on Sunday mornings, we'll get into something tight. Some, then we'll shift on Wednesday evenings to something that's word of faith oriented. Okay. Then all of a sudden, 
We bring back up into Sunday morning, victory, word of faith, but then Sunday, uh, Wednesday evening, we've got to have a balance of what's the process? What's, what, what else do I need to learn to add to my faith, to add to my patience, to add to my virtue, to add to my, you know, God can't bless no mess, so we're for shouting in victory and living like a mess. Ain't nothing going to happen. So if you're just wondering what, what we've always endeavored to do is there's always victory ringing really loud here. But you know what? You'll never experience victories outside of you unless you first learn how to get victories on the inside of you. Yes, right. Amen. And walk in the light that you have, you know, and then God will help you move forward. There are responsibilities to bring victory to others. Let's look at 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 7. This is the Apostle Paul and, and speaking to one of, his son in, uh, one's, uh, one of his sons in faith, Timothy. And again, I'm going to say it again, the people's victory follows the leader's victory. Come on, men, step up and become a leader. I should have had some woman, uh, woman, some, 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 some wives, there we go, get that straight, some wives, say amen on that. Oh, you go, thank you, Nicole, you helped me. 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 7, Paul said, for I am already poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. And I've fought a good fight. I've finished the race. I have kept the faith. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that this message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Man, don't you want that testimony? That's the scripture I say, this is the scripture I would love, Jesus. And then the other scripture, I just want, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to fulfill the length, depth, breadth, height of my purpose and destination of what God intended. I'm going to break down this, um, this, this scripture here. And again, we're, we're walking in victory on the inside. And tonight we're open to whatever God would deal with us about, aren't we? <laughs> Come on now. How many like to, you know, I've been saying, a good thing you can tell your boss is, or ask your boss is, how can I serve you better? Okay, then. How many want to go higher with God? How many would like to serve God better? Remember you said that. Because he'll deal with us. And, and he'll help us. And he'll, he'll accentuate our positive while he's working on some things we need to grow in. So, 2 Timothy, again, just verse 6 and 7 says, I'm already poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. When I think about the word poured out, I think of Philippians 2. It says, for God is working in all of us, giving us the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And also, he's doing everything with, he said, oh, that's a good word. I was going to preach that. All of a sudden, I, I slowed up and realized, I said, do everything without complaining. <laughs> That was a wonderful word, right? God's working in me both to will and to do according to all his good pleasure. Now, just just zip your lip and do everything without complaining and arguing. If you can't say nothing good at all, that if you can't say something, then say, all right, thank you. Philippians 1, 6 goes on to say, and I'm convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting, maturing, and bringing into full completion on the inside of you so that we can become what God wants. We can take in from God and we can pour out on others. He said, I'm poured out. Time of my departure is at hand. 2 Corinthians 5, we, we know the scripture, but it says, yes, we have confident and hopeful courage. I like that. Confident, confident and hopeful. See, I just, comfortable. I know, I, I just join words sometimes. So, but uh, we have confident and hopeful courage. Again, I, we have confident and earnest expectation that God is doing what he said in his word because we believe we're received. And God, listen, whatever you're believing him for right now, just, just take this as, as a word from God. God is watching over that word to make it good, to perform it. He is. You might say, but you don't understand the thoughts coming to my mind. You don't understand the thoughts coming to my mind. I'm just going to do something about them. But you don't know the circumstances. 
I'm facing. Listen, you don't know the circumstances I'm facing. But we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Have good people around us. Walk in victory and help others become victorious. I've had God tell me before, uh, you know, I was going through something. He says, now, uh, part of the key to your victory is start helping someone else. I was like, but God, I need help. He said, no, I expect more out of you. You've been in these things now. Let's go. That's why you never determine how someone else is going to receive because you never know what their level is. And I'm not saying, woo, high or low. I'm just saying that we don't need to be judging other people because you've had so much light for so many years. He expects more out of you. <laughs> Dad Hagen, he was way up there, and he, he would just challenge. He said, oh, should I say this? I'm a pastor. He wasn't. So he'd go and he'd supercharge the body of Christ where, where he would sort of swing the pendulum about believe God. And he said, you know what? You Christians don't even need to go in a prayer line. You ought to be believing God for yourself. It's like, oh, Jesus. Uh, but see, that was bing. And then, then the pastors come say, uh, it's okay. Now, he wasn't lying or anything like that. And I'm not trying to, what do you, what do you call, I don't want to say something because I think it just would be something you didn't think is right. So, anyway, trying to help get you victory tonight. Just, just work and deal with the level God has you on. And there are some times he led me not to have prayer by someone else. There are times I had a whole room full of people helping me. And, and so, so don't, don't take that in the wrong way. So I'm confident, hopeful, and I've courage, and I'm pleased rather to be away from the home, of, you know, out of this body, because we're a spirit, and be at home with the Lord. Therefore, whether we are at home in the body, on earth away from Him, or away from the body or home, and with Him, we are constantly ambitious and we are striving earnestly to be pleasing to him. Paul said, I'm, I'm about ready to depart. Well, it's far better to be with Christ. But I'm going to enjoy this life as long as I can. And fulfill as far as I can what God's called us to do. He said, I've fought a good fight. Right? Only anybody define a fight by losing? A good fight? No. God helps us win. Even though sometimes it looks like we're losing. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, fight the good fight of faith in the conflict with evil. What does that mean? That means you need to stay on the truth even when, when, when darkness is bombarding your mind. And that's, again, that's a time to get around some good friends, some people that can come alongside you sometimes. See, there's a balance. Take hold of the eternal life to which you've called, you're called. And for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many. He said, I've finished the race. What does that mean? What's your race? That means, what's your lane? He, he knew his lane. He knew his race. It's going to take every bit of faith, walking in faith every single day for your personal life and for the, the purpose of your life. Every single day, you ought to be exercising your faith in every aspect of life. We... Walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall come to church on Sunday and live it that day. No, the just shall live by faith. Critical that we have that message. I've kept the faith. Wait a minute. I have finished the race. That means he finished his purpose. He finished his destiny. He ran the race in his lane. When you think about the Apostle Paul, he had an assignment to minister to the Gentiles. That was his, lane, his, that was his name, Lane, right? What do you say, babe? Lane. That was his lane. That was his purpose. Don't look at someone else's lane and say, I think I like what you did better. Well, you can't. You're going to cause a collision. Right? So... Peter was called to minister to the Jewish nation. Paul was called to minister to the Gentiles. I'm just saying, 
He ran his course. He was poured out, fighting the good fight of faith, fulfilling his purpose, his destiny, and he stayed in his lane. So, it goes on to say, he said, I have kept the faith. You only keep something that someone tries to take away from you. Hannah, come take this water. Come here. Come on. You a holy girl. Okay. You take the water. Oh, Jesus. Ow. <laughs> Hannah, you're going to fix my fingernail. Wait a minute. Now, let me, get, let me get my bearings about me here. Come here. Come here. You take this from me. I kept the faith. <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't get no grip this time. <laughs> I got the grip. So there are going to be things in your life, if the, if the Word says, I've kept the faith, it means you kept the faith because something was pulling at it. Wrong thoughts were, were trying to mess with me. Things contrary to the Word of God were trying to mess with me. Hannah, stop messing with me. All right, let's give her encouragement. No, 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 don't give her encouragement. All right, that's right. All right. Here we go. I've kept the faith. Things will try to pull against our walk of faith. Things will try to pull us away from our church. Things will try to pull us away from our good friends. Things will try to pull us away. Just, no, keep the faith. Stay in the faith. Uh, assemble under the pillar of faith, the church, and, and all these different things. Don't get isolated. The enemy wants to pull you aside so he can put you down. There are times in my life I want to be alone. Kurt, you and I, we could just stay alone. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I called you out. Because I'm bringing you in. No, you in. We're coming up. All right, here we go. But no, there are times because I'm around so many people, I just soon go home. Right? I love you. Say you love me. But I'm sure you want me sitting there 24-7 with you. Anyway, what am I saying? There are times that I sort of would rather have been alone, but God said, you, you, you need to be around people. Because you should be healthy for you. What you're going through, get up, take a shower, get active. Do something. Don't just sit back on it. You got to get up. You got to get around good people. You, you got to. I don't care how much you don't want to. I've kept the faith. So if you've experienced, let me say, it goes on to say, and the Lord stood with me, strengthened me to the message that the message might be preached fully through me and to all the Gentiles that the Gentiles might hear. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking. So if you've experienced significant breakthroughs, it's time to start helping others break through for their victory. But then again, get ready for the next fight because it's coming. It's coming. You might be in a great season right now. Yay. Pray. Get your word in. Be around good people. Exercise things that you would in a crisis. Right? You become teachable in a crisis because, man, I need some help. It's, this is way beyond me. Rather than being in a good season saying, you, what, what, you, what are you trying to tell me something for? Well, you're headed toward a bad season. I rebuke that. You don't have to rebuke it. The Word tells us that it's true. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear that. So helping others break through. First of all, in order to help other people break through, we have to understand breakthrough's timing. There are expectations of timing. You've got to, you've got to learn the timing of something in order to be able to bring breakthrough in that situation. There are exceptions to perfect timing, or does just timing in general, if something in your life, your family, or your leadership begins to go south. Whoa, glory to God. I was getting ready to shout something. Uh, get out in front of it. Get out in front of whatever that is. I, again, I talk about myself all the time. I, I talk about myself all the time. I talk to pastors so much, and they, they don't want to deal with something. So they're afraid that, that, that they'll leave, leave the church and take their tithe with them. 
I'm like, what? I heard a minister say one time that one of the biggest tithers, the biggest tither left his church. And he was just praying. He was hurting. He was just like, God, thank you for meeting all my needs. And he said, the God spoke up. I mean, he heard a voice or anything. He said, well, uh, the biggest tither didn't leave. Uh, Jehovah Jireh didn't leave. <laughs> uh, God started this, didn't he? Okay. God, and it's just amazing. A lot of times the people you're holding on to, wait till they leave and see how much left you'll have. Say, my God, I was carrying more than I realized. Well, I love people. We'll go the second or third mile, but then there's sometimes God has told us, address that, and you knew that that conversation was going to separate that relationship. But we loved them enough to do it in love and speak with them. And there are other times you have to correct something in error. And you just knew that when you, when you brought that to their attention, it was going to probably not go so well. Because they had, they had things that they began not to listen to you or take, you know. You, you, only, you only receive from some of you respect. And, and so I said that Sunday, all these messages are sort of merging. But I, I do want to read something that I think is really important. And if, in case you want the breakthrough steps, is understand the right timing. There's right and wrong timing for every situation. And guess what? People are ready for a change when they hurt enough to need it and want it. Did you hear that? You can't have growth without change or pain. It's amazing. Though there are two types of pain you're going to face in life, pain that hurts you and pain that changes you. People are ready for breakthrough when they learn enough and they apply the word to their life and it leads them into victory. They have good examples in front of them and they begin to follow that example and, and the word. People will uh, begin to break through uh, when, when they receive They've learned something, and they do what they've learned that brings them into breakthrough. That was just timing, right? Number one. Number two, ready? Pray through for a breakthrough. I don't want to hear you always say, I'm just, bra- I'm just praying through. Somewhere along the way for that thing, you've got to get through and stop saying you're praying through. There's a through thing you go through to break through, to not hang out in the through. Okay. The word says, it, it, I'm telling you, we need to pray for people that need breakthrough in our world and our life. Um, Evangelist Psalm Wesley said, God does nothing but an answer to prayer. Luke 18, 1, my favorite, just one of my favorite scriptures is because this is real. And Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray. In other words, as long as we're praying, he said, uh, pray so you don't turn coward. Uh, pray so you don't, you don't turn and faint and give out. Pray so you don't lose heart. And pray so you don't give up. Uh, uh, to me, prayer is just not, you know, something that I can do or not do. It's something I, have, I get to do and I have to do so that we walk in victory. And number three, become a breakthrough person. Wow. Number four, find a mentor, find and mentor breakthrough leaders. And the reason why I'm going so fast is because I want to just, just hear this, this word and tell me, well, don't tell me. Uh, but 2 Timothy 4 in the Amplified shows, if you're wondering what a good leader and, and minister of God is supposed to do, and um, we don't get to travel around with just the most positive message. We have to bring the whole counsel of God. How many here really love spinach? You just love it. How many just say, I could rebuke it? Okay, well, but in, in, in the ministry, when you're under a pastor, you have to receive it all. There's some spinach nights. There's some, there's some carrot cake. That's a, that's a vegetable, right? Carrot cake mornings and 
But let me, let me just conclude this. In, in uh, 2 Timothy 4, it says, um, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God, and, I, and my wife and I had to give this scripture to someone else that was bothered by somebody that rejected. They were trying to lead and trying to save their life, but they got rejected. I said, let me, and I was just meditating on the word. This, this word came to us today, and he said, I'm solemnly charging in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and also the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right and even when it is not right. Keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, whether it's welcome or whether it's not welcome or unwelcome. Correct those who err in doctrine or behavior. Warn those who sin and exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity. How? With inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. For the time is going to come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, and they won't tolerate accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something that's ple- correction's not pleasing all the time. It's not supposed to be shameful, or it's not supposed to be brutal, but it's, it'll check you. I think the same where you're getting ready to miss it, God will so lovingly bring correction to a place where it should arrest your attention. It is not no simple, still, small voice and voice of the, you know, soft as the wind. He's spoken up in my heart by the voice of the Holy Ghost that I don't even want to ever hear from him that way again. But he got my attention and that God so mercifully got hold of my attention because he knew my heart was right, but I was going in the wrong direction. When you surround people, just speak pleasing words. Anybody who just does pleasing words, I'm just going to leave it there, that between them and God. They'll accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, cho- chosen to satisfy their own desires and support the errors they hold. And they'll turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable. But as for you, be clear-headed in every situation. Stay calm, cool, and steady. Endure every hardship without flinching. And do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill the duties of your ministry. There's been some of that around this house lately. And very consistently. Because we need to hear words like that just as well. Father, thank you for your word tonight. We honor you. We just take a moment just to examine our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That is within us. I thank you, Holy Spirit. If there's any way we've erred, forgive us. When we've erred, forgive us. When we've stepped out of faith, forgive us. When we've stepped out of love, the love walk, forgive us. If we've erred any sin of commission or omission, forgive us. Oh, thank you tonight for loving us like a loving Father to speak up. Oh, God. Hopefully, we can all pray this prayer. Father, speak up. As far as I know, my heart is good and right. But speak up in such a way that I get it so I only follow you and your ways. Forgive us all. In the name of Jesus, amen.